Hey everyone and welcome back. I'm Emma and you guys are watching a homework club video. So hey homework club kids. If you guys know what we do around here, you know that on Fridays we have a super awesome scavenger hunt planned for you guys. Now our scavenger hunt today, I don't want to give any secrets away, but it's super cool. It's all about you and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So before we jump into what our scavenger hunt is this week, let's of course talk about our riddle. So our riddle I think is a little fun, it's a little tricky, but hey, that's the point of a riddle, right? We gotta challenge you a little bit. So our riddle today is, what building has the most stories? All right, I'll let you guys think on it. And at the end of our video, when we are reading our chapter book, we will go over the answer to this riddle together. So if you can't figure it out, I got you covered. So let's jump in to our scavenger hunt. I hope you guys are excited because today's scavenger hunt, like I said earlier, is all about you. Oh yes, everything we are going to challenge you guys to find this week is all about you. It's all about your memories specifically. We are asking you guys to go out and find things that connect with memories from whenever. Specifically, things like items that remind you of yourself, of a smile, of when you were five years old. Items that remind you of happy memories. We are asking you guys to focus on joy. As the world gets louder and a little bit more confusing, it's our job to bring light and love into the world. So that's what this challenge is all about. And as a reminder, the PDF is available in the links below. Stay tuned and we will show you guys exactly what our hunt looks like this week. So this is it. This is our scavenger hunt this week, guys. I hope you are excited. It is a memory scavenger hunt, like I said. We are asking you guys to find objects that remind you of things you enjoy. For instance, we are asking you to find objects that remind you of your favorite song, movie, or video game. An item that reminds you of yourself. An item that reminds you of your favorite food. Or a time that you laughed so hard that you cried. I hope you guys are excited. Again, this is available in the PDFs down below, and happy hunting. Today, our positive action is something that is super serious. So I hope you guys are not only listening with those ears, but with that brain and that heart as well, because today we are talking about our ability to make choices. Now, choices are huge. We make choices every day. They don't always have to be those big life-changing choices. Sometimes they're just what to wear in the morning or what to eat in the morning or afternoon or at night. <laughs> A lot of eating choices. Those are the good choices. But unfortunately, not every choice we make is going to be as easy and as straightforward and as carefree as what to eat. Sometimes we need to make difficult choices. And what we pick during those times, we need to be aware that, hey, our actions have consequences. Sometimes the choices we make affect the people around us. That's just something to keep in mind as we continue to make choices. Other things we need to be aware of is, hey, everybody makes mistakes. We all fail sometimes and that's okay. Even the most perfect person you've ever met or ever think of has made a mistake. I promise you, at least once a day they're making a mistake, but we're all human. All we can ask of ourselves is to do better and learn from that mistake. Now, if you catch yourself making the same bad choice, making the same mistake, then hey, maybe that's a pattern we need to talk about and change. And there's no shame in saying, hey, I know I'm not the best at this and I wanna be better. And I know I catch myself doing this a lot and I wanna be better. All it takes is taking a step back and doing some self reflection. We talk about that a lot as well. If you have any questions, please make sure to go back and check out our other positive actions. I explain it a lot in those videos. Now, moving on, we've talked a lot about the negative and the impact that our choices have. But I also wanna let you guys know that there are so many positive, great choices to make as well. It's not all bad or impactful or scary. No, we make good choices all the time. The choice to help, 
the choice to be kind, the choice to listen, the choice to empower and uplift, right? These are all things that we're hopefully doing every day as we journey to become our best self. I hope you guys are actively choosing to be kind and help each other out because right now, the world's a little crazy and we need as much kindness as we can get. So, now that we've talked a little bit about choices, I hope you guys have taken something away from this and can use it in your life. Now, let's go read our book. All right, guys, it is time for us to jump right back into our book. George's Marvelous Medicine. Yes, I'm very excited because this kooky little book is starting to get a crazy. If you guys remember, Grandma is a uh, scary. <laughs> and George is scared of her, which makes sense because she is a little freaky. So, George seems like he's come up with this plan um, the next chapter is called The Marvelous Plan, so let's dive in and see what George has planned. So, George sat himself down at the table in the kitchen. He was shaking a little. Oh, how he hated Grandma. He really hated that horrid old witchy woman. And all of a sudden, he had a tremendous urge to do something about it. Something whopping. Something absolutely terrific a real shocker oh what does he have planned a sort of explosion he wanted to blow away the witchy smell that hung about her in the next room he may have been only eight years old but he was a brave little boy he was ready to take this old woman on i'm not going to be frightened by her he said softly to himself but he was frightened and that's why he really wanted suddenly to explode her away. Well, not quite away, but he didn't want to shake the old woman up a bit. Very well then, what should it be? With whopping, terrific, exploding shocker for Grandma, he would have liked to put a firework banger under her chair, but he didn't have one. He would have liked to have put a long green snake down the back of her dress, but he didn't have a long green snake. All right, here is another picture for you guys. As you can see, he's thinking of ways to give grandma a little grief. <laughs> he would have liked to put six big black rats in the room with her and lock the door, but he didn't have six big black rats. As George sat there pondering his interesting problem, his eye fell upon the bottle of Grandma's brown medicine standing on the sideboard. Rotten stuff it seemed to be. Four times a day, a large spoonful of it was shoveled into her mouth, and it didn't do her the slightest bit of good. She was always just as horrid after as she'd been before. The whole point of the medicine, surely, was to make her a better person. If it didn't do that, then it was quite useless. So ho, thought George suddenly. Aha, ho hum, I know exactly what I'll do. I shall make her a new medicine, one that is so strong and so fierce and so fantastic, it will either cure her completely or blow off the top of her head. I'll make her a magic medicine, a medicine no doctor in the world has ever made before. George looked at the kitchen clock. It said five past 10. There was nearly an hour left before grandma's next dose was due at 11. Oh, here we go then, cried George, jumping up from the table. A magic medicine it shall be. All right, here is George, I guess jumping up from the table. I'm excited to see what he'll make. So give me a bug and a jumping flea. Give me two snails and a lizard three, and a slimy sliggler from the sea, and a poisonous sting of a bumblebee, and the juice from the fruit of the juju tree, and the powdered bone of the wombat's knee, and 100 other things as well, each with a rather nasty smell. I'll stir them up, I'll boil them long, a mixture tough, a mixture strong. And then hi-ho and down it goes, a nice big spoonful, hold your nose. 
Just gulp it down and have no fear. How do you like it, Granny dear? Will she go pop? Will she explode? Will she go flying down the road? Will she go poof in a puff of smoke? Start fizzing like a can of Coke? Who knows? Not I. Let's wait and see. I'm glad it's neither you nor me. Oh, Grandma, if you only knew what I've got in store for you. Ooh. All right. We're about to jump into our next chapter. George begins to make the medicine. So, George took an enormous saucepan out of the cupboard and placed it on the kitchen table. George! came the shrill voice from the next room. What are you doing? Nothing, Grandma, he called out. You needn't think I can't hear you just because you closed the door. You're rattling the saucepans. I'm just tidying the kitchen, Grandma. Then there was silence. George had absolutely no doubts whatsoever about how he was going to make his famous medicine. He wasn't going to fool about wondering whether to put a little bit of this or a little bit of that. Quite simply, he was going to put everything in it that he could find. There would be no messing about, no hesitating, no wondering whether a particular thing would knock the old girl sideways or not. The rule would be this. Whatever he saw, if it was a runny or powdery or gooey, it went in. Nobody had ever made a medicine like that before. If it didn't actually cure grandma, then it would anyway cause some exciting results. It would be worth watching. George decided to work his way around the various rooms one at a time and see what they had to offer. He would first go to the bathroom. There are always lots of funny things in a bathroom. So he went upstairs carrying the enormous two-handed saucepan before him. In the bathroom, he gazed longingly in the famous and dreaded medicine cupboard, but he didn't go near it. It was the only thing in the entire house he was forbidden to touch. He had made a solemn promise to his parents about this when he was, and he was not about to break it. There were things in there, they told him, that could actually kill a person. And although he was going to give grandma a pretty fiery mouthful, he didn't want a dead body on his hands. George put the saucepan on the floor and went to work. Number one was a bottle of golden gloss hair shampoo. He emptied it into the pan. That ought to wash her tummy nice and clean, he said. All right, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna show you a few more pictures. Here he is looking in the bathroom. And here he is lugging the saucepan up the stairs. He took the tube of toothpaste and squeezed out the whole lot of it in one long worm. Maybe this will brighten up those horrible brown teeth of hers. There was an aerosol can, super foam sa shaving soap, belonging to his father. George loved playing with aerosols. He pressed the button and kept his finger on there until there was nothing left. A wonderful mountain of white foam built up in the giant saucepan. With his fingers, he scooped out the contents of the jar of vitamin E-enriched face cream. In went a small bottle of scarlet nail varnish. If the toothpaste doesn't clean her teeth, George said, then this paint will paint them red as roses. Woohoo! All right, and then here is little man putting in the saucepan, putting in the nail polish. Goodness gracious. I hope you guys don't make anything that George is making at home. I do want to remind you, this is a book, not real life. Although, I'm very excited to see what happens in the book. <laughs> Sounds like things are about to get all types of crazy. Now, before I say my goodbyes and we wrap up our video, let's talk about our riddle. So, our riddle, if you guys remember it, I thought it was a really funny one. What building has the most stories? Did you think of it? Did you think it was the tallest building in New York? The Space Needle, did you think? Hmm? No guys, it is the library. Ha <laughs> ha, get it? Because there's lots of stories. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. I hope you guys thought it was really funny and I hope to see you guys here next week. So enjoy your weekends, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you then. Bye, thank you for watching.